Hello everybody and welcome back to another video here on the channel. Now today, we're going to be doing yet another video on the $5 PC V2 or 2.0. And I originally made this video on the 20th of July, so about a month ago actually. And I really can't believe that this was a month ago because it really doesn't seem like it. Um, but I did mention in that video that I was going to be planning on making a follow-up video where I was going to be putting a actual hard drive into this machine as well as um, maybe you know installing Windows 98 or another you know older version of Windows like that and um, just you know showing you guys uh, that whole process and I've done videos like this with many of uh, you know the other computers that I have um, acquired and you guys seem to um you know really uh, enjoy these type of um, you know thrift store finds videos and the um, you know follow-up videos to them so that's what we're gonna be doing today is taking a look at actually you know getting this thing up and running you know if you saw in the uh, previous video which if you have not seen that video I'll have a link on screen right now at the top right corner of your screen, so about right there, um, as well as down below in the video description uh, to the original video, which I did make about a month ago. But the um, actual PC did work, you know, it you know uh, turned on and functioned perfectly fine. However, there was, as I said, no hard drive. Um, but I'm going to be installing... And I did have to pull this out of um, one of my other machines. This actually came from a, a Power Mac that I have. And uh, hard drives are, are are usually the one component that I am usually very short on. I do not have a, like enough um, you know spare hard drives to be you know going around and um, just you know putting into a bunch of other spare computers. But this uh, particular machine, which is a Power Macintosh G4, so it is a little bit newer um, than this machine, because this came out in the year 2000, I believe the Power Mac G4 came out um, a few years after that. Um, but this is an 80 gigabyte hard drive right here, so I'm not 100% sure if Windows 98 is going to be able to use the full 80 gigs that's on this hard drive, or if this hard drive will even work with, you know, with this computer. Um, but we're going to be finding that out in this video. If not, this may go on the MJD Extras channel as a failed video. I have not been posting much stuff to that channel lately. So if this video is a you know failed video, which I hope it's not, um, I may be um, you know posting something to there. But yeah, guys, you know that's what uh, we're going to be doing. So uh, let's just get started with the first thing, which is going to be installing the uh, Seagate hard drive that I have right here. So I do have to uh, apologize because I am at a very awkward angle here, and that's usually the way I am in in, in most of these videos. But we're just going to reach around, and I do believe I have the correct. Um, no, I don't. Oh, actually, yes, I do. So we're going to just start taking out these uh, screws here. There are four screws um, in this case right here. And they are, I think these are actually, or no, yeah, these are actually Phillips screws. I'm taking them out with a flathead screwdriver, so that's uh, kind of funny. And that does actually, you know, work sometimes. So yeah, the, um, you know, entire case comes off. And so yeah, there is, there is no hard drive. I do believe the hard drive goes, I'm going to say up here, but no, because that is... Yeah, I'm going to say up here, of course, this looks like it's a uh, expansion bay almost. If you can see right right there, that almost looks like it's a, um, you know, bay that you can take out this door and put like another CD-ROM drive in. So I'm not, I'm not sure. This is a very, very tiny form factor design case. So I got to actually find where it is the hard drive actually goes in here. Okay, so we are back um, and I am going to be actually installing this hard drive in here. Now you w did see me in the you know previous clip trying to figure out where to put this thing and I'm probably going to be um, you know editing most of that out. Um, but essentially what was happening is I wasn't really sure where to put a hard drive in here because you know if you look at this thing at, at you know first glance there's not really a spot for uh, like an, an actual hard drive. There is a um, one five and a quarter inch expansion slot here, but it does not look like an uh, like an actual hard drive would fit in there because um, you know obviously a you know hard drive is a a uh, well um, you know standard hard drive is about three and a half inches, so that wouldn't fit in this bay here properly. So. 
um, what I actually had to do was, well, not really what I actually ha um, had to do, but what, what I eventually figured out is that you do have to mount this thing on the top of the case right here. And, you know, this was something that was somewhat common for these, um, you know, really small uh, form factor uh, design machines because there's really no other place to put it and this is just where I'm assuming it goes because it does fit a hard drive in here perfectly and it matches up with these four uh, screw holes up here so this is the only place that we can put it and there is a little bit of room to put the actual cables up here um, so that's what we're gonna be doing and I was originally going to use the um, four uh, mounting screws from the Dell mounting hardware because if I did not mention before this did come well it, it was originally in um, a Power Mac G4 that I had and I tried to put it in uh, the original $5 PC to see if it would work in there and I never really got around to doing that but I did actually have it mounted in there with these you know green things which you know are very popular from um, various Dell computers and I was going to use these screws right here but they are a little bit long so I am going to be trying to find I, I do have these, you know, bags of, uh, you know, screws right here. And I'm, I'm going to be trying to find some that will fit in here properly. So I've got some various uh, types of screws here. So let's just actually put this thing in here. And it is a little bit, you know, tricky to get it in here. Not, not really that difficult. But you'll see that it does, you know, mount back here perfectly fine. You just got to get it up uh, mounted with those four screw holes right there. And I'm going to see which one of these I actually want to put in here um because i do want this thing to obviously be mounted you know like securely so that uh it doesn't fall off or anything so we're going to get all of that mounted in there and that is really secure and nice on there that is not going to go anywhere um then th the case obviously should still fit over the top and all we got to do now is just plug in the actual power and data cables which i'm going to do uh, down actually I guess I can do it up here that's why this little door thing is here um, so we're gonna plug this I guess it goes in this way yep so we're gonna plug the power cable in Be a little tricky on that and then we're gonna get the data cable right here and that is gonna go right into the IDE or just data slot and yeah I mean that there we go. So we got a hard drive mounted in this thing. Okay, so we got the uh, case back on finally. I'm going to be mounting, or not mounting, but uh, securing the uh, the case here. Actually, I'm just going to be putting one screw in right now because you never know if something might go wrong with the hard drive. And if it does, then, well, this is going to be a, uh, a failed video for sure because... <laughs> I don't have any other uh, spares. All right, and we are back. And just to sum this up very briefly, because I know that I have you know rambled on for like 30 minutes in like the past two clips, but um, the reason why that I kind of have the whole camera pointed at the monitor setup uh, going on here is because I was not able to get the Avermedia uh, GL310 um, capture uh, card that I have to work with a few adapters that I bought and I ended up buying three of these things I bought three of these um, different adapters two of which were v uh, DVI to HDMI and one of them was a VGA to DVI and out of all of these I was not able to get the signal from that computer back there to work with uh, the Avermedia you know game capture light or whatever it's called um, and I'm thinking it's it's a problem with one of these uh, like um, you know adapters because you know, there are like six different types um, of you know DVI, and I think that I got ones that have um, different types. As you can see here, the uh, the plugs on them are are fairly different. I thought that they were going to work because one of them is or claims uh, to be like um, DVI I, which is universal. Um, but it still doesn't really work. So um, I've just decided to not really spend any more money on this thing because I've already spent way too much money, you know, more money than I should have on trying to get this thing to work with um, 
all uh, you know of my computers to have one um, you know universal capturing solution so that you guys don't have to deal with this but to be honest I don't really think that it's worth it at this point because I think that this is perfectly fine and you know if it ain't broke I guess you really shouldn't fix it and I guess I was trying to fix something that wasn't really broken in the first place so yeah we're gonna be doing this and um, finally we are gonna be getting around to installing Windows 98 on this computer and I do have in this large box of software over here I do have an actual copy of Windows 98 I just gotta find it I, I do actually have a, a few copies of it um, this is actually second edition I think I'm I'm just gonna put this one on this is Windows 98 second edition uh, for PCs without Windows as you can see at the very bottom right there for PCs without Windows this is a um, you know full uh, legitimate copy of Windows 98 second edition um, so we're, we're going to be putting this on. Um, I could either do this or Windows 95, but it says that you know it's made uh, for Windows 98. And there actually is a Windows 98 second edition key right on the side there, so I'm probably going to be using that to um, you know put it into here and everything. So um, so that is nice. And I will need a Windows 98 boot disk as well, but I have plenty of those as I have like a million one floppy diskettes. So um, without any, uh, any further ado, let's just turn the lights off in here, and we we should get this thing working. There is going to be a little bit of glow coming from my... Actually, I can probably just turn that off. Yeah, that's not that bad. So, we'll uh, just get this turned on here. Okay, so we have a old uh, Dell PS2 keyboard here, and I do believe I'm going to need... A Windows 95 or like an MS DOS uh, boot diskette, but I'm not 100% sure because it is booting from the CD perfectly fine. But I do want to actually like you know run F disk and format the hard drive and everything. But we might be able to do that. Um, and I completely forgot. L let me actually just do this here so I don't forget. Um, because um, I apparently completely forgot in the last video to show you guys what the actual specs of the system were and some of you guys were like well what what are the specifications of the system so here they are right here i think you can make that out fine so as you can see here we are running a intel celeron processor at 433 megahertz with 190 megabytes of ram um and as you can see at the at the sort of um you know uh, middle column there it does actually uh recognize uh the hard drive as 65.5 gigs now this is an 80 gig hard drive so i was right about that um like uh, around 60 gig uh limit as windows 98 and most 9x systems don't really go over that without i guess some you know modding it but we're not going to be doing that or anything like that so it's only going to be actually seeing 65 gigabytes um, and then we obviously have the uh, you know CD-ROM drive and everything so yeah these are the actual specs of the system I'm sorry that I didn't show this before because I completely forgot about it um, so it's gonna press escape to continue here and we're gonna boot up from the CD-ROM and I, I think we should just let's see yeah, we're going to start computer with CD-ROM support. Okay, so we don't need like a, a actual boot disk or anything. I, I just thought that we would for some reason because some uh, Windows 98, um, well, older PCs, they don't actually, um, you know, support booting uh, from the actual CD-ROM. So, um, but I think if we go to the C drive, yeah, so invalid drive. So we're just going to right here run F disk and... Computer has a disk larger than 512 megabytes, so we're definitely going to enable large disk support because this is very important. Um, and we're going to create an active DOS partition, a primary DOS one. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I forgot to turn off autofocus. Um, but yeah, um, so most of the uh, you know tutorials that I do are done in a virtual machine, or pretty much all of them are. Um, I, I have not done one on actual hardware, so all of this stuff where it's verifying the drive uh, like integrity and things like that and like you know formatting of, of the drive these are all things that are done extremely fast because it's all done in a virtual machine it's all you know virtualized and not done on actual hardware but because they were doing this on, on actual hardware now and that this hardware is very old and you know like a bit slower than modern hardware or actually like a lot slower than modern hardware 
it's going to actually take a while. You see we're only at 54%. Uh, so we're only like a little over halfway done. So I'm probably going to be doing a lot of, you know, cutting and editing to this video. But this may be a, a very long video, which I think is something that you guys, you know, might, you know, enjoy. Because I know that I haven't really made a video this week yet. And it's just been, there's just been like a lot of things going on. And one of those things is I've been working on the 5K special. So before you guys say anything in the comments, because I know that you're going to... Um, but yes, I've, I've been working very hard on the 5k special and I, I've had um, a lot of problems with it and just a lot of times that I had to reset the whole thing and but it is I'm almost finished with it or almost finished with the first part of it then I gotta actually you know do the uh, like voice narration edit it and everything so but that should be done. In, in the coming weeks or so and, and I know that I always say that but I can't really give you guys like an actual time estimate because I'm not 100% sure uh, so yeah but we are we're almost done here we're at 99% so it's done verifying drive okay so do you wish to use the maximum available size we're going to say yes it's going to verify the drive integrity again um, so this could basically be like another Windows 98 second edition um, you know tutorial video I don't know why I would need to do another one of those, but I just figured that it'd be cool to do this on actual hardware. All right, so we are back, and as you can see, we are finished with the little portion that we were at before where it was doing the uh, verifying of the drive integrity. So we do have to restart the system uh, for the changes to take effect, and then we gotta you know, do uh, the format command afterwards. So we press escape to exit, and I'm just going to press control to delete to restart. And we're going to just boot from the CD-ROM again. We're going to start the computer with CD-ROM support once again. You can hear it spinning up and everything. And now we're going to type in format C colon. Okay, so for some reason the uh, CD-ROM of Windows 98 does not actually have the format command on it. So I'm not able to actually format the C drive. I'm not really sure why that is. Maybe you're intended to do that from the setup, but just to be safe, I do want to actually format the whole thing. So I do have a Windows 95, or I mean, not Windows 95, Windows 98 um, disk or like um, actual you know floppy disk in the drive. So I'm going to actually be uh, actually, I want to change this to the floppy. So I'm going to be moving. Whoops! This is going to be the CD-ROM, and that's going to be the hard drive. And we'll do the other, and we'll do this one. Okay. No. So we're going to save and exit. So now that it sees a uh, floppy drive in there, it should actually, or a f uh, floppy disk in there, it should actually boot from that. I know this is going on way longer than I wanted to, but this is probably going to either be a two-part video or just a, you know, a long, like, hour-long video or something. Here we go. Format the hard drive first. That's what we want to do. Yes. feed unconditional format okay <laughs> now this is where it's going to take a while <laughs> because this is going to be this is a non-quick format this is a traditional format this is going to take i don't know a while so we're, we're, we're going to be here a while you can see it's not it's not going anywhere so yeah it's just at one percent complete so I'm what I'm probably gonna do is just completely stop the video here to not have the camera like you know uh, run, run out of battery and um, yeah so hopefully it will just kind of stop after this and let me um, you know re like re uh, you know set everything up and then I can continue but it may just go into the setup and start doing that and I might not have the camera on so you might miss part of the setup but either way. Um, Hopefully everything will uh, you know work out, but I'm just going to pause the video here and I'll come back uh, once it is all finished up. So we are back and I have successfully formatted the hard drive on this computer. 
Um, it has been um, about a day or so since um, you saw the actual last clip. Um, but we're going to be actually moving on to the next portion of the Windows 98 um, installation. So to do that, I'm just going to actually reach over here and turn on the machine. Um, hopefully the um, you know like white balance and everything on the camera should be fine here. Let's just get it focused. There we go. And yeah, again, sorry for you know having to do it this way, kind of the old style, um, you know, pointing the uh, camera uh, at the screen. But I mean, this is. I think that it, you know, looks pretty decent, and uh, I uh, think that it, you know, will look fine uh, for the rest of this video. Uh, um, you know, again, I wasn't really able to get it working with the Avery Media Capture card that I have. Um, so we're just going to be booting into the Windows 98 installation, so here it is, um, and all we got to do is go through. Um, I, I've done this many times uh, before. So we're going to uh, run probably uh, Microsoft Scan Disk here. So we're just going to let it do that. Now again, since this is on an actual you know PC, uh, some of this stuff is going to take a little longer because you know in like most of my uh, tutorial videos, this thing would probably be on the screen for like about two seconds and then it would instantly be done. Um, this is actually going to take a while here, and uh, yeah, so the. Um, like actual formatting of the drive probably took close to an hour, maybe a little bit over an hour. Um, and that's simply because, again, this is an actual 60 gig hard drive or what Windows is seeing as a 60 gig hard drive. Again, it's actually an 80 gig. Um, so we're just going to click on continue here and we're going to let it go through the installation. So we're, we're going to choose the uh, C Windows and, you know, the uh, default installation directory. It's going to check for installed components here. Okay, and we are going to be doing a typical installation, and we're going to actually do a list of components because I don't believe it actually has the games in here by default, which is something that I do want. Yeah, see, for some reason it just doesn't have the games in here. Um, all those, um, you know, uh, good old Microsoft card games. Um, we're going to get all this stuff. I will probably be uh, installing Windows 98 Plus on here. That might be for a later video. Um, we'll get quick view as well, why not? Um, so, you know, we'll get most of this. We can always, you know, add this stuff on later, but we have plenty of space on this hard drive, probably more than enough space um, to, uh, you know, have all this stuff or, or, or most of it. And that looks good, so we're going to click on next. And we're going to name this, I'm going to call this uh, 98 box uh, workgroup, we'll just leave it into workgroup. We won't put a uh, computer description. We're in the United States, we're going to start copying files. And you can see on the uh, left there, it says it's going to take 28 minutes. This is probably going to take 28 minutes, um, or maybe even more than that. So I will actually be pausing the video here. Um, and I will come back once it is finished, so I'll see you then. Okay, and we are back, and right as um, Windows is actually booting up, you can see that we got the uh, getting ready to run Windows for the first time, um, you know, a little boot screen there. I actually was editing part of this video, and I just happened uh, to look over and saw that the whole thing was, you know, actually booting up. So, um, just turn this thing on, you know, kind of just in time for this. Um, but we're going to be entering in the uh, user information. Um, let's uh, see how the camera is doing here. I do want to. Um, I think you got to turn off autofocus every single time. Um, but we're going to put in my name. It's probably going to ask for the product key. There it is. So now there is a Windows 98 Second Edition product key on the side of this. Uh, PC's case, so I'm just going to be putting in that key. So I'm just going to do that really quickly here, and I'll be right back. And we're going to click on Finish to continue setting up Windows 98. And that actually did not take 30 minutes. It probably took more around 15 minutes. Um, and well, because it was only about half of the setup, as you can see, we still have 17 and well now 16 minutes to go. Um, so. This is the, the kind of part where it starts asking you kind of 
uh, what you know region of the um, you know U.S. that you're in. Um, so again, I'm just going to be pausing the video once this um, you know finishes up here because this is just going to be a um, you know like bunch of hardware stuff, and um, I will come back once it is finished doing this. So it appears that the uh, internal clock in this thing still actually has kept time. Um, almost to the hour. I mean, it's August 22nd, 2016, so it's got that right. Um, it is actually 4, uh, 4.25 p.m., so it's got, it's off by about two hours, but yeah, this, this computer is almost, what, 20 years old? It was made in like 2000, so now probably about, you know, 16, we'll just say it's almost 20 years old. Um, and yeah, it, it has kept time. You, you will notice that it just says 16 up here because I, I mean, I don't, I don't think that this was running on like the older, you know, two digit time standard because if this was made in 2000, I don't really think they would have a computer on a two digit time standard. Um, but I mean, that, that still works. I mean, August 16. I mean, it could be 1916 for all we know. Um, and we are in the Eastern time zone. And I'm just going to change this. So it is 4, 14, no, 426. Control panel. It's going to set up control panel and, and everything. Yeah, we're at the very last part of the setup here where it's going to do the, you know, very last part where it updates the, um, you know, like actual system, you know, configuration and everything in the system settings, this, this part here, um, you'll see that we're at nine minutes. I, I'm surprised it, it doesn't feel like that this took 30 minutes. I mean, maybe I just, I mean, I just, you know, wasn't timing it, but this did not really feel like 30 minutes. So I don't really think that it was, um, it was probably a lot less than that. Um, so yeah, it's uh, updating system settings. I'm, I'm probably not even gonna gonna pause the the uh, or like stop the actual camera here because uh, it seems like that this is gonna go by fast because we've been going down like we were at like I think ten minutes when this started, we're already down to seven. So some possible ideas for some future videos that I can make on this machine. I mentioned earlier that maybe you know installing Windows 98 Plus, but. I don't really think I would make that into a whole video because I did actually do an episode of time travel, my um, you know time travel series on this channel on that. Um, I don't really think I'd do like a whole you know video on that. Maybe something you know very briefly in like a separate video or or something. Um, and then I was kind of thinking of adding like an internal network card to this and trying to get this thing on like the modern internet and seeing how it would handle that because I think that would be something pretty cool. But um, I'm not sure if I have, um, like a proper, um, you know, network card that would work with this. I'll have to see if I still have that or if I sold it. I actually do believe that I still have an older Linksys one. So, you know, it very well might, might work with this, but I'm not sure. But that could definitely make a very cool video is seeing how like older hardware like this handles the modern internet. Um, so we're just going to press uh, restart now because it looks like that we're done here. Um, so yeah, if you guys, uh, you know, want to see that, I mean, definitely, you know, post something down below, you know, in the comments, and it looks like we're doing on autofocus again. Sorry about this, guys, I gotta fix this camera every single time to turn it off autofocus, because it's really annoying. Um, because when it's, when it's like this, it just loves to, you know, go into autofocus. Um, we're gonna boot from the hard disk, I gotta take the CD-ROM out of here. And there we go, Windows 98. We have the uh, lovely Windows 98 uh, boot screen here with the clouds and everything in the background that I'm sure all of you guys who have used Windows 98 are familiar with. Um, and it looks like we're actually done here. It's going to ask me to enter a password, but I don't really think I'm going to enter in one, um, especially the fact you can just press escape to bypass the login anyway. So uh, I'm just going to press enter to, you know, not bother... It's found a, a Dell something. Do you see that? That was kind of oh, that was uh, probably the actual monitor. So it found the plug and play monitor. Wow, um, that is nice because this this monitor is not from this time period at all. Um, 
Sure, we will search. What else we search one for new drivers? Uh, oh, oh, this is gonna search. Well, it, it's not gonna find anything. Oh, it found. Okay, it found the driver. Nice. Uh, I'm guessing that's like a you know basic VGA driver. Um, because I mean, obviously, we do have um, like an actual picture here, so it does work. And well, there we go, guys. <laughs> Windows 98, Microsoft Windows 98. Um, on actual hardware, on hardware that was designed to run Windows 98 Second Edition. Um, I'm gonna uncheck this. Obviously, I'm gonna have to do some work on getting the uh, you know proper like VGA graphics adapter because first of all, everything is like cut off. You can see that the um you know like actual cropping of this and which i think you, you you know you can just fix that like from the actual monitor itself but um yeah i mean there it is uh, i'll run i think dx dx diag is on here so we'll we'll run that um so it's got uh name here is uh, 98 box operating system windows 98 we have an intel pentium 2 which is weird because it didn't say Intel Celeron before, so I guess Intel uh, Pentium 2 MMX, um, 190 megabytes of RAM. Um, we've used 20 megabytes of the page file with a DirectX version of 6.1a. So there we go. Um, obviously, you know, Internet Explorer, anything like that isn't going to work. It's probably just going to throw up the, yeah, this wonderful MSN thing. So we're just going to close out of that. Um, but let me actually see if we can yeah we're gonna get we got either two colors or 16 colors but it does actually recognize I, I'm pretty sure that this is the actual model number of this monitor because this is uh, a Dell monitor and I think it is the SC 177 FP so that is nice because this this monitor is not from this um, like the time period of, of this computer at all it's actually like a bit newer so that is nice um, but yeah, I'm going to have to do a lot of stuff um, to this computer to actually get it working, but that's probably going to wrap it up for this video because um, I've had to do a lot of editing because I've been editing this video kind of as I've been, you know, like uh, kind of in between sessions that I've been doing this, like actually, uh, you know, recording the whole process. And it, it's probably going to end up being, you know, maybe 30 to 45 minutes long and I don't really want to, you know, have it go on longer than it really has to be. So... Um, if I do decide to make a you know follow-up video to the follow-up video, um, it's probably going to have to be in like a whole separate video. Um, but if you guys want to see that, definitely um, you know let me know. But again, guys, just thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.